What's up guys? In this episode we're going to be talking about Sega Saturn games that aren't that bad. Now what do I mean by that? I mean that these Sega Saturn games are often looked down on for some reason. Whether it's a technical aspect of the game, whether it's just the, you know, gameplay itself, there's some reason people don't like these games. And I've chosen about nine games here, and it's really important that you understand what I'm trying to say, because I'm not trying to argue that these games are awesome or that these games are must-buys, because actually in the past, I've said some negative things about these games too, because some of them really do deserve being said that they have negative aspects. But at the same time, a really truly bad game that isn't worth your time, I don't think any of these games qualify for that. Some of these games have elements that make them very much worth owning, and I do hope you agree. So let's go ahead and take a look at Sega Saturn games that aren't that bad. Alright, the first game that we're going to look at is Street Fighter the Movie, or Street Fighter Real Battle on Film as it was known in Japan. This was one of Capcom's very first Sega Saturn fighting games, and I will remember it pretty specifically when it came out. It came out in the summer of 95, and I remember importing it, and I was expecting it to be the arcade version of the game which was done by a US company and is a radically different game that plays like some of the later Mortal Kombat games which really focused on uh, air juggles and air combos. But um, when I stuck this game in my Saturn I was pretty shocked by it because it was a Capcom game and it looked bad. I mean even then guys it looked bad. The digitized graphics were really like washed out, they weren't animated well. The music wasn't very good, the voice samples were crappy. I mean, there was a lot about the game to dislike from the moment you laid eyes on it. So I, I do really understand why people look down on this. I mean, it's so easy to just look at this game and go, wow, you know, they really crapped the bed and this isn't worth my time. However, Street Fighter the movie is based on Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo's gameplay, or a lot of it is based on it. And it's really easy to pick up if you're familiar with Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Uh, most of the moves are the same, the supers are the same. You know, there's a lot of similarities there in the gameplay, and that really is the saving grace. It's what makes this game perfectly playable. It also is what makes this game a lot better than some of the worst fighting games on the Saturn, which is why this game should not be lumped in with that steaming pile of crap like Criticom and Rise 2 The Resurrection. Um, when you really get down to it, this game plays fine. When you, with The gameplay plays fine. I mean, you know, fireballs, uppercuts, you know, hurricane kicks, charge moves, supers. You're going to jump right into the flow of this game knowing Street Fighter and you're going to be able to enjoy it. And I think that for the price of the Japanese version, you know, it's really inexpensive. I think you can get this game easily for under $20 complete with the spine card. And that really makes this game accessible, it's easy to get into, and certainly not one of the worst games on the system. Now I may have a soft spot for it because I did import it fairly early in my Saturn's life. And although I couldn't stand the way it looked, I liked the way that it played. And that is really where the recommendation comes from here, is how it plays. Um, if you're looking for a good looking fighting game that's animated well, you definitely should look elsewhere. If you're looking for a Capcom game that plays like Street Fighter, this one is one that is going to, you know, satisfy those needs. It's also based on a really corny movie from the 90s, of course, that starred, uh... Jean-Claude Van Damme and you know we're all pretty well aware of how bad that movie is but that movie is also aged to the point where it's sort of B-movie good where you sort of watch it to laugh at it and just sort of shake your head like what the hell were they thinking but even so man play you know pick this one up play it it's not so bad definitely not as bad as people make it out to be you definitely can have some fun with it round one fight Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! 
you mm -hmm. win. Perfect. All right, moving right along, we are going into another Capcom fighting game, this time a 3D fighter, and that is Final Fight Revenge. Now, I know a lot of you probably just let out a collective, holy hell, you know, I can't believe he's saying Final Fight Revenge isn't one of the Saturn's worst games, but it's not. It really is not. It was done by a, the US arm of Capcom, if you can believe it, especially since it only came out in Japan. And it was originally developed as a Titan arcade game, which the Titan was the arcade version of the Sega Saturn. Now, it uses the 4 megabyte RAM cartridge, and I think a lot of the hate that is directed towards this game is because of the pedigree that came with Final Fight. Final Fight is a well-liked series. It was a very, very good series of fighting games between the arcade and home. And people were, you know, looking at it like, why the hell is this not a side-scrolling game? And I can certainly understand that, man, because I think this would have been awesome as a side-scrolling 3D or 2.5D game that used the 4 megabyte RAM cartridge. Um, as it stands, it's a one-on-one -on -one fighter. It doesn't look particularly good. It doesn't play particularly good. But it is far, far from one of the worst fighting games on the system. If you want to play bad 3D fighting game on the Saturn, you know, there is the aforementioned Criticom, but you can also fire up something like uh, Fist. Fist on the Sega Saturn is a god-awful 3D fighting game that makes Final Fight Revenge look like Soul Calibur, and that is not hyperbole, my friends. That is the absolute truth. Final Fight Revenge as it stands, it plays like a very clunky, very comical, I guess you could say, version of Capcom's fighters that you've played before. A lot of the moves are the same, charge moves, supers, I mean, it's very familiar to Capcom's other stuff. Some of it is comical in terms of how it plays out in the animation. Some of the characters themselves are comical. You know, it doesn't take itself seriously, and I can certainly understand why a lot of people look at that and sort of thumb their nose up like, this isn't worth my time. But, like I said, people heap this game in the, you know, worst, you know, fighting game on the Sega Saturn, or worst 3D fighting game on the Sega Saturn list, and that's absolute horseshit because there are many other worse fighting games on the Saturn than Final Fight Revenge. I mean, like I said, guys, fire up Fist if you really want to see how bad a 3D fighting game can get. Alright, now it's time to get Konami in on this list, and we are going to talk about Crypt Killer, or Henry Explores, as it was known in Japan. Now, this is a light gun game on rails that a lot of people say is one of the worst games on the system. That is absolute bullshit as well, because this game is far from one of the worst light gun games on the system, much less one of the worst games. Um, it's very similar in flow to something like Virtua Cop. You know, you start out, the camera's moving around, stuff is popping on the screen, you're shooting at it, you're trying to keep it from killing you, and that is the gist of the entire experience. Uh, it supports two players. I think the original arcade, if I'm not mistaken, supported three or four. But uh, the Saturn version is two players. It supports the light gun. It's fairly accurate. It's very easy to play. And, frankly, I think it's a pretty enjoyable game if you can get some co-op going in it. Now, a lot of people will look at this and go, hey, this will look so much worse than the PlayStation version. And you'd be right, it does look worse than the PlayStation version, particularly in the texture department. The textures on the Sega Saturn look like absolute garbage. 
but in the Saturn's defense, the arcade version was actually based on PlayStation hardware. So of course the PlayStation was going to get the better version of it. But when you get right down to it, in terms of light gun gameplay, what is there not to like here? The game is ugly, I'll grant you that, but as far as stuff popping out to shoot, it's as good as any other light gun game on the Saturn. It's challenging, it's fun with two players, it's very easy to get into, very easy for people of all ages to play. There really is nothing to point blank hate on in this game other than the visual presentation. Um, it's an inexpensive game too, especially in Japan. I mean, I think in Japan it's another one of those games you can get complete for under 20 bucks. And you, in the grand scheme of light gun games on the Saturn, which, you know, if you pay attention to any lists out there, there's not a ton of those games. So comparing it to something like Virtua Cop, Virtua Cop 2, yeah, you could say that this is a worse game. But when comparing it to the other light gun games on the system, I don't really see how you could even remotely lump this in with worst games on the system. If you want to call it one of the worst looking games on the system, I would probably entertain that a lot more. As it stands though, I think, quite frankly, Crypt Killer is a very playable shoot 'em up. The next game we're going to be looking at is Gale Racer, also known as Radmobile, and this was originally done in the arcade by Sega AM1 on the System 32 arcade board. It's a super scalar racing game that, quite frankly, was brilliant in the arcade. It was a great looking game, it was a great sounding game, it was a great playing game. So I so wanted to love the Saturn version, and the Saturn version dropped really early in the life of the system in Japan. And I remember when I picked the game up, I was so expecting to love it, and I didn't. And there's a number of reasons why I didn't love it. There were changes made to the game. There were visual changes made to the game where polygon cars were introduced, and uh, the gameplay felt different, and... There were just things about the game, they didn't add anything really extra to the experience. They, you know, they made the game really difficult too, you know, and that was hard to get into. It was just a lot about the game that was a real turnoff. You know, coming out that early for the system, you were pretty much stuck with the digital D-pad gameplay, which was nowhere near as good as the analog steering of the arcade. Um, they had the visual changes in it, like I said, with the polygon cars, which looked like ass in my opinion. They were so out of place. Um, there was just a lot about the game that could have been so much better. And I guess in order to get the game out when they did, you know, there's, a, there's some things about the game that are weaker too. The draw-in is closer, you know, which is a shame because the original arcade game looked so incredible in terms of graphics. But at the end of the day... Sega's DNA was in this game. You can't help but to enjoy this game if you give it any amount of time to understand how to play it. No, it is not as good as the arcade. No, it is not a particularly great game overall. But Gale Racer is still not one of the worst games on the system. It is not one of those games that you just want to dismiss as a piece of junk, a piece of shit, or something not worth your time. Gale Racer actually has a little bit of gameplay in it that you can find and enjoy. And, you know, I, I sort of am sad whenever I see somebody just completely dismiss Gale Racer because, you know, it, the game deserves so much more attention than it ever got. It came out at the worst possible time, man, because when it came out in Japan in December, it was right before 
the big flood of other games started, you know, coming out. You know, it, before it was a few months before Stall hit. It was a few months before Daytona came out and Panzer Dragoon. You know, when those big games started hitting, people just forgot completely about Gale Racer. And then, of course, the game never left Japan. So, of course, it's always been one of those backburner games where people have had mild curiosity about. They'll hear something negative about it, and then they'll just never, ever play it. But give Gale Racer a shot. You know, burn yourself a copy, whatever you need to do to play it, and just give it a try. You know, sit down and try to understand how the game wants you to play it, and try to adjust to some of the changes from the arcade version. Like I said, it doesn't play particularly well with the digital D-pad, but it's still got, it still has that great Sega DNA in it, man. That same great feel to a lot of what this, or, or that same great feel that a lot of Sega racing games have. And if you can just find it, give it a chance, you might just find a good game here. Next game we're looking at is Sonic 3D Blast. And I know a lot of you are probably sitting there again and going like, oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. No, I'm really not kidding you. This is a game by Traveler's Tales, and it is the game that Sega stuck on the Sega Saturn in place of a real Sonic game. It was a port of the Sega Genesis game. It was... A complete cop-out. I understand why people hate it. I understand why people look at it and sort of go, wow, man, I can't believe this is what we ended up with on the Saturn as the Sonic game. <laughs> and I really do understand that, guys. I mean, there's no doubt about it. This is not the Saturn, or this is not the Sonic game that the Saturn deserved. It's not the Sonic game that Saturn fans deserved. It is an easy cash-in game that... Sega did not put a lot of time and effort into. It does not look particularly, you know, superior to the Genesis version. It's got better color. It's got a couple of better effects here and there. But at the end of the day, man, this is a 16-bit game that was ported to the Saturn. And you really, there's no way to get around it. So a lot of the hate for this game really centers around that. But it was... A game that was targeted at a younger uh, a younger audience and it's the kind of game really when you get down to it was meant to be almost mindless in its gameplay you know you you hop around you collect little birds you go to the next level you might play a bonus level I mean there's really nothing to it there is no depth in this game other than you know, just the simplicity of collecting things and moving on to the next stage. But like I said, it was the target audience for this game. It was aimed towards kids. And in a lot of respects, man, when you look at it, it's an easy to get into game. It's an easy to understand game. There's nothing about this game that your kid is going to have a hard time with. You show them the control, they're going to understand what they need to do what they need to collect and what the point of the game is and and that's all there is to it there's a lot worse games on the saturn than this in this genre alone i mean if you want to play a couple of worse games than this fire up something like Wiz or fire up a uh, uh, willy wombat and play one of those stinkers man i can't stand either one of those games and this game is infinitely better than those two stinkers so you know, lumping this in with a crap game, I can understand it if you want to say, you know, cheap cash in, you know, not what the Saturn needed, not what the Saturn could do, the Saturn could have done so much better. I'll agree with you on all those points, but one of the worst Sega Saturn games, it definitely is not.
Moving right along, I have a 2D side-scrolling shoot 'em up for you. And this one is In the Hunt. Now, nobody ever said In the Hunt was one of the worst games on the Saturn, but you will often hear that this is not the version of the game that you want to play. And why is that? Well, it's because the game is loaded with quite a bit of slowdown. Compared to the Sony PlayStation version, it slows down a lot more. And that has sort of brought this game a really negative reputation. And it really is a shame because this game is an incredible shoot 'em up when you get right down to it. You command a submarine, you are fighting underwater, but you can still attack things above the water. The animation is incredible, the explosions look incredible, just the color is incredible. The visual presentation of this game at the time of its release was really just it, it just it just knocked your socks off it really was that great looking and it still is today now the Saturn version did not benefit from the port that it would get obviously whether it was a resource issue whether it was the developer that was chosen whatever the reason was this port did not turn out particularly well in terms of technical presentation. Like I said, you get a lot more slowdown in it. And that has caused a lot of people to look at this as not the game that you want to get on the Saturn. And I disagree with that. I still think this game holds up well on the Saturn even with the slowdown. Now, you're going to feel it in places that the arcade version didn't have it. You're gonna feel, you know, you're gonna feel a lot more of it than the Sony PlayStation gave you. And as long as you go into it understanding that this exists and you're going to have to deal with it, this game is actually quite good. It still looks as good as the arcade version, and as far as I can tell, putting it side by side with the PlayStation version, I think this version is animated better, the explosions look better, stuff falling apart looks better in certain places, so... This version may have that extra slowdown, but it still doesn't it still doesn't diminish the fact that it's still an excellent game. This in a lot of ways reminds me of Dracula X on the Saturn where its visual and technical presentation had a lot of, you know, issues. But the core of the game was still there. It was still the gameplay was still very playable. And I would say that's the very much the same within the hunt here. You know, people will tell you to steer clear of it, but if you're a Sega Saturn fan, you know, don't hate on it. Don't, you know, drive away from it, man. You know, give it a shot. Understand that this game is still quite good. Many people out there may tell you differently, but when it comes down to it, In the Hunt is still an excellent playing game on the Sega Saturn. Next up is the Sega Saturn conversion of the classic Sega racing game Virtua Racing. Now this is a game that me and my friends had a lot of arguments over guys and I've actually said some negative things about this game in the past myself because there's a lot about this game I don't like. However, Virtua Racing on the Saturn is often unfairly crushed. I mean, it is lumped in as just this piss poor translation, this piss poor version that has no redeeming, you know, factors. And I, I just, I don't agree with that. I think Virtual Racing on the Saturn is, in a lot of ways, what Sega should have done with a lot of their other racing games. Yes, the game does have technical problems. Yes, in some ways, the, ver the arcade version just blows it the hell away. However, Time Warner was the company that would bring it to the Saturn, and they added a ton of content to it, man. They added different modes. 
that weren't in the arcade. They added a bunch of different tracks that weren't in the arcade. They added a bunch of different car types that weren't in the arcade. And these are the things that Sega themselves should have been doing, man. I mean, no joke. Sega should have been adding this type of stuff to Daytona and Sega Rally and, you know, and Manx TT and, and racing games like that, man, because this was what Saturn games needed to get people excited was tons and tons of content, man. Remember when Gran Turismo came out for the PlayStation and how people went ape shit? And with all the cars and tracks and different modes and things you could do in that game, that's the kind of hype that Sega Saturn games needed at the time. Why didn't Daytona have five, ten more tracks thrown into it with different modes and gaining licenses and doing things, you know? Why was there no kart mode in Daytona like there is here in Virtual Racing? I mean, there's a lot that Time Warner did do right in this game. You know, you can't just look at this game's visual presentation and dismiss it and say, man, this game doesn't run the best, or this game didn't look the best, or man, look at the pop-in, it looks like crap. When there's so much added content to the game, you have to take that into consideration. And when you do, you find that Virtual Racing actually isn't that bad of a damn game. You know, it certainly isn't one of the worst on the system. Again, it's one of those games where you could name half a dozen other racing games on the system that were way worse than this. So guys, if you've heard Virtual Racing is a bad game and not worth your time, don't just go by that. Give this game a try. Hell, the kart racing mode alone in this game is worth playing. I mean, seriously, it really is that fun. Now, if you've been on my channel for any length of time, you know I am not a fan of Battle Arena Toshinden. But Battle Arena Toshinden URA is actually not that terrible of a game on the Saturn. And I brought this one up because I actually heard a couple of people talking about it uh, not too long ago. And all of them were basically just saying that this was one of the worst games on the Saturn. It was complete crap. It had no redeeming value whatsoever, and I really don't agree with that. You know, it's true, Battle Arena Toshinden was never really a top-playing, you know, 3D fighter, but at the end of the day, there's a lot here that you can get into. The moves are easy to pull off, the graphics are not wholly terrible, you know, the, you know, uh, music isn't too bad. I mean, it's, it's very easy to get into, it's very easy to play, you know, and in that regards, again, there are just so many worse fighting games on the Saturn than this. This is one of those games that, when you first play it, you're going to understand what this game is, you know. You're not walking away from a Dead or Alive, or a Virtua Fighter, or a Tekken, you know, you're not you're not going to go into that expecting that level of finesse and that level of flow, you know, as those great games have. This is a game that is, it's very disjointed, it's clunky, it doesn't play well, like I said, but it's a game that's easy to get into, you know, and once you understand that, once you learn a couple of the characters, once you see what you can do here, you know, it's, like I said, man, this just, there's so many worse games on the Saturn than this. So... Again, it's one of those games that if you've heard somebody tell you it's not worth your time, you should still give it a chance, man. Battle Arena Toshinden URA? Hell, it's not so terrible. <laughs> Alright, our last game is the Sega Ages version of Galaxy Force 2 on the Sega Saturn. 
Now, of course, the original arcade game was done by AM2. You know, classic arcade game. It was done on the Sega Y board. And it was one of the most visually impressive shoot 'em ups of its era, man. I mean, if you were around back then and you walked into an arcade and you saw Galaxy Force 2 for the first time, your jaw hit the floor, man. It was really that impressive. Now, the Sega, ver the Sega Saturn version is not as impressive. On a technical level, it doesn't run as good and it doesn't look as good as the arcade version. And that really is a shame because I think that given maybe the time and the resources, there's no reason this game shouldn't have been arcade perfect. Now, a lot of people look down on it because of that. They look at it and they go, it's not worth our time. There's better versions of this elsewhere. And you're right, there are better versions of this elsewhere. But don't completely throw off the Sega Saturn version so much because this game still does look good in a lot of, you know, in a lot of respects. It still has a lot of the eye-popping, eye-catching visu uh, visuals of the arcade. And, you know, a lot of that fun gameplay is still here. A lot of that challenge is still here. A lot of that solid Sega DNA is still built into this experience. So while some people will tell you this is a bad game, it's a bad port, you should skip it, look elsewhere. There's certainly some truth to that, but at the same time, man, if you have access to burning a copy, or you can find a copy of it cheap, the Sega Saturn version still has some fun factor, still has a reason for you to own it. So I definitely think you should give it a try. So there we go guys, Sega Saturn games that aren't quite that bad. Now I know some of these games may surprise some of you, and you're sort of sitting there wondering, hey, you've bashed these games in the past, what's your angle here? What I'm trying to say here guys is, is that there are sort of levels of bad games. You've got bad games that aren't worth playing, and then you have bad games that will still have some redeeming value to them. They'll have some reason to play them, some reason to draw you in and actually give you a little bit of fun factor, however brief. And that really is, at the end of the day, what the point is of the entire gaming library of every system out there. You're going to pretty easily fall into the good games for old game systems because lists of best games are often out there and then there's lists of hidden gems out there. What you have to wade through with some uncertainty are the games that people have really mixed opinions on because it's those games that are going to be very hit and miss with you. You're going to roll into those games and you're going to find many of them to be unplayable, but then again you're going to find many of them may surprise the hell out of you. I'm hoping a few of the selections here may do just that. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching and I will catch you next time.